Hey everybody and welcome back to another MRE Security YouTube video. Today we're going to take a look at PT1 on TriHackMe. So if you don't know about the PT1 certification, it is their brand new penetration testing level one certification for offensive security purposes. And it's supposed to be entry level. I just recently took this and passed, and I wanted to go through a little bit of the pros and cons and the differences between the OSCP, EJBT, and ECPBT, alongside various other certifications that I can't probably think of off the top of my head. This is a very good certification to take. I'm going to say it right off the bat. It was something that I wasn't expecting to be so difficult at the very beginning, and it really made you think outside the box. Something that I also really enjoyed about this certification in particular is that it kind of covers all the bases of really penetration testing as a whole. Now, I'm sure there are other ones, right, where you have IoT hacking, Wi-Fi hacking. I'm sure there's a bunch of others, but it goes through the main big subjects, which is the network security, web app security, as well as the Active Directory something that you're going to see on almost every penetration test that you do so this is a practical certification you do have to hack into various kinds of boxes and obtain specific flags some of these flags are broken up some are not some are whole some are not it really depends on the situation and vulnerability that you identify there may be multiple things that you have to do to retrieve the flag they do have a really nice table here to show us what the difference is between all the different kinds of certifications or competitors and something that i do agree with is that they do fill all the different kinds of bases but as you can see the price point is not too bad at 300 dollars with training included whereas if you have the oscp that's about what is it now twenty four hundred dollars seventeen hundred dollars something crazy like that the pen test plus is thirteen hundred dollars which is outrageous because it's just a multiple choice test and then you have the pjpt which is a little bit lower but they don't have the web application security component which i think a lot of certifications should really start to look into because web applications are the external source for a company and in order for a threat actor to break in most of the time it's either going to be through web applications or phishing slash phishing there's various other kinds of techniques that attackers can do but those really are the three main spots that threat actors go about trying to break into a network in addition for this exam they do give you a 48 hour window so two days and that includes reporting so this exam does have reporting involved and i'm going to explain reporting in just a little bit because i don't know if i really love the whole reporting mechanism that they were using but i'll get to that in just a second we could see that also you do get three months of premium access and you can go through all the different various kinds of paths on trihackme as well as you also get one free retake. So if you do fail, you can always retake it. I believe it is 72 hours or so after you take it the first time that you can then take it again. Something that's also kind of neat is they really make you think outside the box. Something that the EJBT didn't really have me do too much. Now, I am a professional inside of the cybersecurity field. I have four years of penetration testing experience. And I have to say for certain that I was a little stuck at first. I didn't really know what I was doing or what I was getting into. And that could also be because I haven't looked at network security in over a year after I took my OCP back in May of 2024. So this was all completely new to me. I've been doing web apps ever since. It's something that I was not expecting to be so difficult, but it was difficult. Something that I also want to preface by saying is this exam only holds for three years. After that, you're going to have to renew it. The reporting mechanism that they use is a customized platform where the AI ends up grading you. So no human actually reads your report. Everything is done through AI, which is kind of cool, but also a little bit scary. So you have to do the security issue. You have to do the severity based on the CVSS score. So make sure you go to cvss.js.org or something along those lines. Make sure you get the proper CVSS score because they do take points off for that. Ensure that you also put in your flag that you did capture through the vulnerabilities that you present. Go through the identified vulnerability, how you went about exploiting it, as well as the remediation steps. Make sure to be as thorough as possible because you will get points deducted if you are not. Something that I would like to note about this is you cannot upload images for whatever reason. When I was doing my exam, I thought I was going to be able to upload images and make it into a real report. That was not the case on my exam. I don't know if that's going to be a feature down the line. 
but for now i was unable to get pictures uploaded so don't worry too much about pictures just write down as much as possible there are a few requirements they're going to have to do and they're going to give you a rule of engagement where you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to read it and ensure that you understand the in scope and out of scope items and then you can proceed with the exam environment now while the ai is pretty cool something that i do want to mention quickly is that it is extremely difficult to get the ai to perfect its craft in the sense of you may explain everything perfectly but it'll still deduct points because specific keywords are not being shown within your report this happened to me a few times on my report where the ai gave me feedback and it said I didn't have this, that, the other. And I was a little bit confused because I put everything down that I needed to put down. As a matter of fact, the web application section was my worst section on the exam. I got the most points taken off on the web application section than any other section on the exam. And again, I do web application security, so I don't know exactly what the AI was looking for, but I put everything down as if I was taking an actual penetration test. This is not a certification that you could just throw a couple of lines in and pray that you get a good score. You will fail. You have to put in as much detail as possible in order to pass this exam. So I want to move on to my experience a little bit. And at the beginning of the assessment, when I started the exam, I was having connectivity issues and I didn't really know what was going on. I tried to contact support, but it was a Saturday, so they weren't able to help me during that time frame because no one was in office. Additionally, it was my bad luck because there was also a holiday that Monday, so I wasn't able to even get in contact with them until Tuesday, which is after my exam period. So I had to come up with a different resolution. After about four or five hours of testing different things, I finally got the exam environment to work and begin testing. So that's definitely one flaw in the exam. I'm unsure if other people have had that issue, but for me, for whatever reason, I was having issues trying to get the exam environment to even work. After that, I began going through the different kinds of boxes and the Active Directory was by far the easiest out of the bunch. Very straightforward. If you know and understand the basics of Active Directory, you can easily do it. Something that I think a lot of people struggle with on this exam is the web application security section. The web app is extremely difficult, in my opinion, for a beginner. I do not believe that the web application section is beginner friendly whatsoever. While there were some vulnerabilities that I did find, they were not on the exam, quote unquote, where I didn't end up finding a flag. I was able to exploit something, but nothing was showing as a flag. So that essentially became null. I did try to write it in the report and I ended up getting points taken off because a flag was not submitted into the box. So I'm not really sure why that happens or why that is a thing on the exam. I don't know if it's to trick specific people or to trick beginners, but whatever it is, I don't feel it's right. Just because this is an entry level exam, you're not supposed to trick people. You're supposed to help them at the end of the day. Additionally, when you're on this, make sure that you document everything because everything is key and you're going to want to ensure that you have all the commands situated and put into the report. I know that sounds a little bit weird because you I just said that screenshots are not allowed on the report, but I'm just saying put in the commands anyway. So the AI that is grading you knows what commands you're running. If you don't do that, chances are you may fail because it doesn't know how you got to that step. Again, think of it as an actual penetration test. They want you to feel like you are a real pen tester working on a real environment and they want to see all the vulnerabilities that you have to offer within your assessment. Something on the web application section that I do want to mention is make sure you look at every single endpoint. I don't even care if it's a simple get request. You don't know what can be on these requests. So you want to look at every single thing. So I may be getting a few questions about how does this compare to the OSCP, the ECPBT and the EJPT. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the better certs to take. And the reason why is because I do love web application security and they also integrate the Active Directory and network side. Something that I do wish that they did fix was make the Active Directory side a little bit more challenging. It was extremely beginner and the web app less challenging because I don't believe it's as beginner as they make it out to be. But for the price point and for what you're getting, I believe that this is probably one of the best certifications you can take right above the EJPT. So if you don't wanna take the PT1, I strongly encourage you to check out the HAPT and ECPBT from INE. And last but not least, would I recommend the certification to anyone? It really depends. If you are a true beginner trying to break into the field, I probably would not recommend the certification right off the bat. 
What I would recommend is you stick to TryHackMe, get their free edition or pro edition, and if you are a student, you can get a .edu account. You have a discount for the premium edition, and you can go in and check out various kinds of boxes, get familiar with your methodology, really understand it, and then from there, you can go on to take the test. If you have no prior knowledge and you don't want to take that path, I encourage you to look at the EJPT. But if you do want to get a certification that doesn't go through the TriHackMe route, I strongly encourage you to check out the EJPT. It was my first certification. I absolutely loved it. I did a beta test for the EJPT V2, and they may already be on EJPT V3 by now. But nonetheless, there will be a blog on the Emory Security channel, so be sure to check that out in the description down below. It may not be released until next week or the week after that because I want to put in as much detail as possible so you guys can pass there will be a few uh cheat sheets quote unquote as well as different kinds of track me boxes on the blog so make sure to check that blog out but if you do have any questions about the exam please let me know i'm always happy to share my information with you and try to help you pass this certification obviously i'm just gonna put a disclaimer out there don't ask for answers because i'm not going to be able to give it to you nor do i want to this is a credibility thing Whenever you get a certification, you want it to be as credible as possible. So you want to do it to show to your employer that you're able to get this done. But other than that, if you did enjoy this video, please let me know in the comment section down below. And please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.